<laughs> Ready when you are, Gridley. We're good. Go. Go. Whenever you get your stupid speaker to work. It's not on. <laughs> Is it not on? Why would it not be on? It's not on. Because you're chef. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Welcome to. It is playing. Can you hear it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're good. Well. All right. Let's start again. <laughs> Too late. No. Oh, no. 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 I'm not We're stopping. Welcome off. to Everyone Racers, a, a show designed for the world of shut the hell up and let Jeff do his job, and low dollar racing. It doesn't matter what kind of La champ or lucky track dog you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. We even think you drifto hell flush peeps are, right? As long as you drive it hard and build it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes in the world of low dollar racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet or but terrible, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just a tip, we're sure you're going to giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are everyone racers. Thank you. What's sad? It's good. It's a, uh, he sounded sad. What's that? Oh, sorry. <sighs> we are everyone racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to another Cressida episode. That's <sighs> 71, baby, of our podcast. If you're in, not driving a car currently, don't forget to check out the E1R bingo card. The newest version is available in the show notes with updated words and phrases. Check out the show notes. And you can already check off wires for that yes. one. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah, Jeff's music does not work. Wrong. There we go. Got it. <laughs> Although they didn't know that because we were. <laughs> yeah, we had That's why we're anyway. giving it to them now. <laughs> yeah. Chris, what you working on? Well, mostly we had a weekend in Atlantic City this past weekend, which if any of you follow any of our social media, you saw a, a veritable blizzard of posts from us on <laughs> the shenanigans Live that happened. videos. Yeah. So Bingo. that was fun. We had a good time. Uh, Sunday Bingo. I worked on resting and watching the back of my eyelids and then going back to work and eBaying stuff. I'm still eBaying stuff. Stuff's selling. It's great. I'm up to like two hundred and something dollars worth of junk that I don't want that's gone, including the snow tire chains that came in the Mercedes when we bought them because the guy was from Seattle and couldn't the West Coast you have to have tire chains because just in case you're in the wrong spot and eat chains. And he had chains for a 285 3019 tire, so kind of rare, but they're still brand new. So th those just sold tonight. So uh, and we just did oh, some snow removal because we got a few inches of snow and the decimal snow clearer blower of death did not kill anyone or maim anyone tonight, even though it gave me some frustration. Mostly because I think I didn't have enough gas in it. That's all. Ain't got no gas in it. Exactly. So, so, so I have a question. Who in Pennsylvania wants those chains? Nobody. It's on Actually, eBay. I saw a guy in Virginia. I don't think anybody oh. in Virginia wants these chains either. No. But I know. Whatever. His money was cleared PayPal, so what do I care? There you go. All right, mental. What's so I, I've actually gotten my garage cleaned out enough to where I can do some work on the infamous Plymouth Champ. So, so I've weird. been the weird. The so weird. So weird that you're doing weird work. <laughs> that's all. That's what's weird. All right, yeah, all right. I'll give you that. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, so I've, I've I've actually got all of the new fuel lines run because I I had to order another length of it from Summit Racing. It's ugly, but it's solid. It is actually one un broken bar well three times from the gas tank up to the carburetor and then to actually run the lines i've been trying to pull the uh which i know will never work again air conditioning system off which i am honest probably just stripped 150 pounds off of that car the bracket alone i do not exaggerate was easily 12 pounds just for the compressor it's ridiculous that's awesome now uh what, what year is it 1980 81 yeah. 81 yeah makes sense and that's um, the kind of air conditioning that when you turn the air conditioning off, it's like turning the supercharger on on the Plymouth yeah. Champ. Yeah. <laughs> you can all listen the drive away from a yeah. stoplight. Yes. yes. Um, so I uh, we had a marksmanship meet, but on Sunday I went to an Eagle Scout induction ceremony for one of my former Ooh. students. And I think, Jeff, Chrissy, you two will appreciate this. This kid, while getting his Eagle Scout, was given five palms. That's a lot. 
Exactly. Uh, which I didn't realize at the time, but yeah, he got a bronze, silver, gold, and then another silver and gold. He got, he was supposed to get 21 merit badges to get his Eagle and he got 50 something. Yeah. It's, I think it's five merit badges for each palm. Yeah, it was, and like the other Eagle Scouts that were there to welcome him in were even, they, they, one kid stood up and goes, how many Eagle Scouts do we have here? About 14 people raised their hand. He goes, how many of you have five palms? And no one raised their hand. No. But I, it, it did kind of remind me, if you've got a young person out there, put them in Boy Scouts. That is just across the board. It's a good environment. It's a great environment for them to learn. Even if they don't stick with it, like Watch I didn't Watch your with mouth. It, <laughs> if you've got Girl a young Scout person, is great Scouts, too. do not put them in. I'm sorry. Put them I'm in sorry. Girl Scouts because I meant to say Scouts, and thank oh. you, Chrissy, for correcting me. No, no, you're hey. absolutely right. Put them in Scouts. Scout, no. Scouts no. USA now accepting we are, women. We are not starting this this argument. We're not. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> Don't do it. All right. But ex- expose them to some sort of scouting because it, it's good for them. It really is. Uh, Chrissy, what you working on? Including oh. like the Civil Air Patrol and all nope. those other like, No. <laughs> Civil Air Patrol is different than scouts. Chris, put in the, put in the uh, show description. Uh, three quarters of the podcast argues about uh, good or bad youth organizations. <laughs> Chrissy. <laughs> Get us out of this hole. What you okay, working fine. on? Okay, fine. So we did a lot of prep for this weekend. So we made some food and packed a whole lot of junk up for the weekend. Uh, and we, yes, so then when we got home, we needed some severe recovery. I think we might be too old for to party like that, sadly. <laughs> Greg, um, Greg would adamantly disagree. Uh, yeah. So Greg's no, he a did. machine. He did pretty well. He he destroyed some lives this weekend, so that's cool. I mean, in the nicest way possible. Uh, yes, Jeff. <laughs> I, I I think maybe that uh, Jello shots in the color of the flags <laughs> is probably not a good idea. You know, red flag. Everybody take a red Jello shot. Green flag. Everybody take a green. Jo- that's probably. I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to go with the with the just like moonshine when I ban that from the team. We we gotta not do that. <laughs> well, we could do it in smaller portions, less booze. We got them from a stranger, so maybe who knows how much we were drinking. And I just had them like melting on my lap. So yes, that probably didn't help my cause. Um, but random, random Jello products from a stranger in Atlantic City. That's a great idea. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time. Get your yes. kids scouting. Get your yes. kids at scouting for God's sake. Doesn't Don't help. let them go to races. <laughs> oh. It's a bad idea. Um, and lastly, tomorrow is the best day ever. That's all I got. There you go. So I'll go next. Uh, this weekend was basically working on building all those social media content we're going to talk about in a few minutes because uh, we have lots of listener feedback from that. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Cool. When uh, other people were trying to make Bruce's car faster, I was doing all kinds of posts from the Gambler's Classic Indoor Auto Race. I just wanted to get the whole name out there. And yeah, I did change a tire or two this weekend. My my back's a little little uh, wonky from pushing and lifting Bruce's car. But yeah, that's what I did all weekend. Uh, I watched a little bit of the 24 of, at Daytona. Anybody else do that? Yeah, I um, I had to actually pay for YouTube Premium to watch Ugh. it, and then right after I get it all figured out, because some guy was illegally pirating it on YouTube, and then it got shut down. So I I go and I sign up for it, and I pay for it, and then they cut to indoor gymnastics, which hey, I respect indoor <laughs> gymnastics, I, not what I'm here to watch. For. So then I got to wait until nine o'clock. So at that time, I went up to my uh, favorite pizza place and watched it up there and then caught the uh, well, I say I caught the finish. I caught the rain on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, that rain was making me jealous. I wanted to be out there. So, yeah, we talked about rain Why? in the past, but what? Why? Why so you could spin into the jealous? grass. <laughs> <laughs> I love rain. <laughs> yep. Anyway, yeah, I do not like ice. I love rain. Let's move on to our guest. You may have heard him in the back as he whoop whooped a few times, but he has <laughs> stayed quiet, unlike some of our other guests. Or but us this or week's anybody else's or any, exactly. <laughs> uh, so ferocious competitor with tetanus racing, newly crowned twenty four hours of lemons national freaking champion, Eric. I'm gonna try and say it right, Maservi. And don't Eric. forget it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget it, Eric. Yeah, we what you we well about? earned that one. Yeah, we, uh, the national champion, you know, it's always kind of a, a, a booby prize. And we went into it thinking there was not a chance, not a chance. And uh, it definitely went down to the last wire. 
And if you saw the results, we came in at a tie. Well, I happened to be looking at the 2019 scratch out rules and I'm like, huh, I didn't realize there was a tiebreaker in here. So we sent it over and said, uh, yeah, I think we win. Oh, wait, you did. Cause lemons was all like, turns out we have a rule. So we, right. had, so you had to call them out on that. That is, yeah, we awesome. had to tell them what the rule was. So <laughs> the rule. It was great. Yeah. So, uh, the, what you working on, we, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are in this that, you know, we have the surprise thing that's happening here in about a week that we've never heard about. And, and you know, I, it's just just popped right up on the radar is this whole, you know, not catching on fire thing, you know, because they haven't been telling us about this for two years. Uh, so we've been working on trying to get a fire system in a car. And, uh, you know, at the same time, we're trying to get a fire system in a car and buy parts for it. Uh, we're, uh, you know, nine million other people are starting the year trying to build out their cars. So we're trying to buy parts. There's a backlog, everything else. So, yeah, that's that's been our fun is, uh, you know, doing little repairs for the, the upcoming Barber race and trying to get uh, trying to get a fire system. And uh, well, we're taking three cars. So fire system and three cars. Mm. All right. Well, you'll be good at it by the third one. So put that in yeah. the car you drive the most. <laughs> yeah. Do the other guy's car first. Not a bad plot. Yeah. <laughs> Cool, it's news. Oh, I'm sorry, we done, Eric? Yeah, that's all good. Cool. News and notes time. Start it up, Chris. So, as Eric just mentioned, this weekend, we've got the annual Lemons season opener, the Shine Country Classic at Barber. Thanks, Nick. He sent us the uh, entry list. 84 cars, 16 BMWs. Boring. Boring. Only two Miatas, nine Hondas, three and a half Porsches, and a mother effing 1987 Buick Grand National. Dale be praised. Fantastic. You know what? They're going to send it. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, they're going to send that rod right through the block. <laughs> That's where it's going. Ha- have we confirmed that it has a Turbo 6 in it, or do we know? I just saw it on the entry list. It doesn't matter. If, if No matter what it has, if it has a Turbo 6, doesn't have a Turbo 6, the robot arms shall be flailing. Why you do it? <laughs> classic. $500 mm-hmm. car, blah, 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 blah. So good on them. Way it's to like go, guys. guy we saw at NASA at uh, Pitt Race who was running in some time trial class on an actual GNX. And it had been a race car for a long time, and he's out there just door to door with all this other stuff in his big black GNX, and he... He, zero cares given. Make, make sure you tell everyone what kind of motor it had in it. And uh, LS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they had ripped that Turbo 6 out after several, several years of yeah. campaigning it. Yeah. God yeah. bless him for both. Yeah. <laughs> Worked out well. So uh, some of the... Oh, Chrissy, hello. Yeah. I just a quick question. Um, does that, Do we know if any of these uh, or which ones are running the rally, which I know we, we didn't talk about yet, but are they re- is any running the rally and then running the race? I don't. Know. I didn't see anything that looked like any of okay. the race cars that I recognize on the Insta. Because well, I think we, the last, uh, we, had, we actually went last year, and I, there were not many, if any, that that ran it. Right? Okay. Never mind. Uh, like the, the like the Beetle, I think tried it, and then um, yeah, didn't Sputter uh, and, try it too, or was that the year before? It's the 560 SL from year Las before. Vegas. Year before. Yeah. Okay. Year before. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Eric. Sorry, interrupt. Well, hey, but some of the cars that are probably going to battle it out for A-Class, well, actually, first off, let's talk about C-Class. This is, this is God's chosen class. We expect the uh, Escape Velocity Racing 1964 Plymouth Dart versus Slant 6 and their Plymouth Valiant. They have a Slant 6 Battle Supreme. We're all looking forward to that one. That's the where Should the real racing happens. In that That's A-Class. Gonna, yeah, the second round of that one that happened in Houston also. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And they were – they're they're it, it is a – it's a slugfest. They are not playing around. And that's the best part is he's always someone to race at these races. No matter what you're driving, unless it's the Rolls Royce, there's someone. And even the Rolls Royce, <laughs> you're, you're battling the people who are in the paddock a lot. And you're still beating some of them. <laughs> so there's your battle. Uh, but the people who are <laughs> battling to go fast, who I don't know, which I don't know why we do this, but some of those people were, were there sometimes too. Uh, Save the Tatas and their Chevrolet. With, it, it goes ludicrous speed. Lemonade Racing, they just drive the wheels off that, that damn E30. Done Racing Racing with the AMX-bodied Z3. Well done for them, but they're always fast. Property Devaluation, another BMW. Squirt and Coronas, our friends in the 300E. Big old car. It takes a while to wind up and get rolling, but uh, the Straits of Barber help it do that. 
former and winner. The- yeah, exactly. Another former winner. You got it. The Three Pedal Mafia Moonshine Division is going to be there with their Mercedes SLK wide body. Go check out the rear structure in that car and how much stuff they've cut out of the inner, inner fenders <laughs> the, and stuff. The it's or lack amazing. there of real structure? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's held together by the roll cage, basically. Um, Burp Racing, another former winner in their E36. And some clowns called Onset Tetanus. And they've got a Porsche and a Z and another boring BMW. So boring, boring. <laughs> the Z is back from putting a rod through the pan. So hopefully the Z makes it through oh, this race. Oh. You had, had a, a busy, time. busy winter it, in Atlanta. <laughs> Troy was out in the Z and I was out in Hans's Z36. And he and I for half an hour just kept going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And that was good, good racing. So yep, that's awesome. All right. So uh, I, I did I misspeak? Are you onset tetanus now? Like forever or is that just when anton is joining you uh so anton's the, on, the onset side tetanus is well everybody else yeah we're we're probably going to keep that name so we've really figured out that part of how you win a national championship is you learn how to name your teams properly yes so yes, name yes. Team properly yes and... across the entire series then you get points across the entire series this is so up. yes anton ran with us in houston he does come out here and run with us and uh we unfortunately have not made inroads into running out there but uh we have plans cool excellent so uh i'll discuss some of the terrible cars out there and these are all terrible the grassroots motorsports group who should know better why they did this we have no idea but they bought tom lumino's tragic heartbreaking 93 fox not even way too pretty and made it way too pretty. Yeah, true. yeah like, it doesn't matter how pretty it is; it's still going to break I, I, their when, hearts. When Lamino like, ran it, it was pretty. Also, yeah. uh, he just it just didn't, you know, it, it got damaged as it went. But it was pretty, uh, pretty yeah, terrible. I don't know. Pretty, yeah, pretty <laughs> terrible. But I I do not know who they have driving from the grassroots motorsports crew. But I usually guarantee it's, it's Tommy and uh, uh, Tim. They're always Tommy on and it, then, and then they usually bring a hot shoe. I don't think there is a group out there that could hot shoe a fox better than Tom Lamino. <laughs> I so, agree. I, I'm going to put out there a bold statement. When they bring that to any track that Tom has put down line numbers for, they will not beat his times. That That's is a, a bet bold statement. And a bold statement. And if anyone wants to refute me, they can hit me up on the social media because I am absolutely going out on a limb on that one. Um, so, are, yeah. you sure, are you sure he made enough laps to be able to tr- to track? No, that? no. I said on any track he made good laps. Oh, okay. I'm sorry for that part. I was just thinking he's had more time in the paddock than he has on track. And, uh, and I and I know Tom Lamino is listening. No, so he's I'll not. Say. And even if he is, it's okay. We yeah. love him. But yes, we do. He does follow us on social media. So I'll oh, make sure okay. Uh, yeah, so Tom, your car was terrible. You knew it. You got rid of it, but you did make that thing dance on three wheels. So Duff Bear is there. They're a great team, and they have a terrible 1972 Triumph Stag. Poorly done, gentlemen. Retro Racing will be there. Our friend in his 1970 super exclamation point Beetle. Silent but deadly racing. Our friend Matt and his 1988 Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe, which is making a, a triumphant return to Lemons Racing after many years of sitting in a barn somewhere in South Central Pennsylvania. Yes, mental. And there probably will be another mediocre bill from Mediocresville battle between the Thunderbirds because the Thin Blue Swine are bringing their uh, terrible award-winning <laughs> Thunderbird as well. If Good it's award winning, it's not nearly as terrible as Matt's. Mm. Or or they can swap. It was award winning for being terrible. <laughs> they can, they can oh, swap course. swap parts between the two. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yep. First one to blow up, you get the other parts. Okay. <laughs> um I get the funny ones. Dodgy racing in a nineteen eighty eight Dodge Daytona. Not funny enough. They're from Dodge City, Alabama. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. Uh, I think this is a trend. Dumb, dumber, dumbest, and Mike um, in their Ford Focus, which is just, I guess it's not, it's played, I think, but cool. Um, Florida Man Racing, and they're also doing a uh, doing the rally in a giant purple slab racing for Mustang. Uh, our friends of, in the Fartari, Fartari, I think, um, who are do themes just so well. Uh, hopefully they do better than Leia did at uh, Atlanta. 
projectile dysfunction in their Mazda 3, oh, excuse me, Mazda MX-3, and then do you even race bro racing in a Pontiac G8 base V6. They make sure to put base V6 on so that I know, the truck does not freak out. $500 uh, car, my butt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In other news, the 24 Hours of Lemon retreat from Moscow left from Moscow, PA today. This is Tuesday, the January 29th that we are recording, and the field looks as stupid as ever. Lots of GM wagons, a black 924, several Panthers in the field, lots of stuff that looks like it might have a slant six in it. Um, Yeah, so... Some of our listener friends are in their hoopties traveling to Alabama right now. Should arrive at the Barber Race on Friday. Uh, it's hard to tell who's driving what as the opening photo barrage. You know, it's hard to tell if they're taking a picture of their own car or somebody else's car that they like. But uh, Giant Dave, also known as Caddy Wrecker, is driving in something giant. Uh, Donnie P, our boy from Florida Man Racing, has some sort of full size GM slab, like a Caprice or Buick something. It's not yeah. a wagon. So, no, uh, uh, Steph Schrader's with them as well. She's yeah, embodied very, with that team. Very off brand, Donnie. Zero points for you for not bringing a long roof. Uh, regular car reviews of YouTube fame, I believe, has a Yugo that is already having transmission problems. And <laughs> they're doing the old, you know. Just add some gear oil. That might fix it treatment on some tiny fun. little town in the middle of Pennsylvania. I don't know. It's it's early to have those kind of problems. <laughs> it, is, it really is. And it's a standard. So, like, how bad could it be? It's a stick. So, yeah, uh, snow hit them pretty hard today. They had to travel to places like Centralia, Pennsylvania. Gets a little mountainous. And, uh, yeah, y'all had, like, four inches or so in Redding. It looked like six or eight in the center of Pennsylvania. Well, of course, in Trillia, the snow doesn't actually build up because the ground is so warm <laughs> from the <laughs> eternal coal melt. mine fire that's happening under the town, which is why there's no town anymore. Yeah. Pennsylvania fun facts. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I like when they were just first dumping trash down it and dumping water up and all kinds of stuff down there. It's like, well, what else are we going to do like with this giant burning hole in the ground? <laughs> right, exactly. All right. I'll, I'll say it again so everyone can Google it. Centralia, Pennsylvania, the un, the longest burning underground coal fire still going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For those fans of Brockmire, it's not the same town, but yes, it's nearby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for about as far away as you can possibly get from a burning underground dumpster fire that is Centralia... <laughs> Extreme experience can put you in the driver's seat of some of the world's best supercars at over 20 racetracks in America and Canada with no speed limits, no shifting restrictions, and no governors. Their 2019 schedule's up. Head to xxspeed.com and check it out. Experiences at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, Phoenix, Willow Springs, Texas Motor Speedway, Road America, Poconos, Utah Motorsports Campus, and the normal things like Audubon and AMP and Hallett. They've got seven models of cars to choose from, including the new for 19 Challenger Hellcat Widebody, because America... The famous year-round location in Nolan's with Mental's favorite straightaway that he'll tell you all about if you ask him in person. Pro instructors like Jeff Mental or me in the car with you, helping you explore the car's limits and drive the racing line. Enter Everyone Racers, and 25% off is yours when you book at xxspeed.com. Extreme experience, it's your turn. Awesome. And even though Chris and Chrissy have cats and consider themselves cat people... Everyone on this podcast is dog people, specifically Lucky Dog Racing. Check out their 2019 schedule, including the true 24-hour event at Button Willow, which only has eight spots left. This is this race includes a midnight pancake feed. Somebody put yes, that in it the does. notes. Yeah, that's it does. awesome. Of course it does. It's Kathy. Like, yeah, it's official that. since it's posted on the internet. They're going back to Laguna, August 28th and 29th, and even now with lower sound restrictions. So get out the steel wool and pack it into those pipes and add all kinds of diffusers if you can. Put the stock so, exhaust uh, back on. <laughs> yeah, put the stock exhaust back on. Uh, they'll be heading to Chris and Chrissy's favorite. Uh, or maybe second now, the Ridge, so get there early to get the better feeds, the fees, excuse me. You don't want to miss their non-racing but full-fledged racing events like the first annual Dog Stock Jamboree at Shasta Lake Resort or the third annual Flocktoberfest in October. Head over to RaceLucky.com to take on their full calendar. Tell Kathy we sent you. 
It won't get you a discount, but we just really like Kathy and want to say hi. Look for her to be back here in April to talk all about how their schedule is going and hopefully give us a free entry to Ensenada. <laughs> Sure. I hope she's listening. <laughs> Free entry to She's Ensenada. very busy. She's probably not listening. Uh-huh. All right. And even so, um, yeah. So uh, we are looking to expand our horizons and our listeners' horizons. So if you have a motorsports-related business or interest, we want to hear from you. Um, we want to, <laughs> or do you just want three really great people and one okay person to talk about your ad on the podcast when listener with a awesome, um, huge. Uh, listener base and it is the size of the entire population of Norman Park, Georgia, which I assume is very small. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, then uh, come find us. Call us. Email us. We want to hear from you. Excellent. So you know who else calls and emails us all the time? Chrissy's mom. Does she? Hi, yeah, Chrissy's mom. Why do we bother to color code, Jeff? Why? Why? Because <laughs> you, you started to walk away. Because I was leaning forward to the mic. Because I wanted to say hi to Chrissy's mom. Can I do That's that? Very nice of you. All right, fine. He's everybody, just that excited. Hi to well, I think oh. it is. In his defense, it is Chrissy's mom. Yeah. You know, Mental, I think you should just take Jeff's section, which is next. Yeah. <laughs> just because. Uh, sure. This will be fun. Uh, since. Listen, our <laughs> But no, it doesn't make sense because it talks about us standing around, not doing a whole lot. Fair so, he wasn't it. there. I'll do it. I got it, Mental. So, <laughs> since we were standing around a lot of the race this weekend, because we don't drive those tiny little cars, TQ midgets and stuff, uh, we went, uh, while we were sober, I should say, or maybe not so sober, uh, we went to our uh, Instagram feeds, we went to Facebook Live, we have several videos out there. If you haven't seen them, go check it out. I will say that the... The roundy round racing that is indoor auto racing is rather special. If you've never seen 750 cc carts of death on a ice hockey rink without the ice, you should really check it out. But while we were, we, we went live on Facebook inside the magic trailer that Bruce owns and immediately our one and only international listener from Sweden, Erlen Lank. Did I say it right. No. He said we pronounce the G hard, right? Laga, yes. probably. Laga, probably Laga. So yeah. he's we apparently he's trying to tell us how to say his name. So Erling, just tell me Laga. We're gonna go with Laga for now on. So yeah, that's it. That's he what I got. Our only viewer. Uh-huh. No, 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 he's our we only viewer <clears throat> from Sweden. He was the only one watching live. No, at your, the your time. sister got on at that. She at the time. Time. But yeah, if you but if you pin that stuff to the top, so many people come back and watch it. You guys ended up with like six hundred interactions on that video. Is that good? Wow. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I should go back to it. Hey, Their brains also, are bleeding now. We also posted a picture about our fellow teammate Zach Beeler. He had one of the most, if not the most, epic hangover I've ever seen. And coming from Three Pedal Mafia, that says a lot. His primary mistake was that he tried and failed, as most have, to keep up with Greg Smith. Stayed up too late, too many shots. He didn't really start recovering until after 3 p.m. So, well <laughs> done there. We gave him some rehydration salts to perk him up, and I think they actually helped. So, look at the picture of his near-death experience <laughs> on Facebook, because everyone loves those. Mental? And when he says in the history of Three Pedal Mafia, folks, we had a guy in one of our first races wake up with a <laughs> mohawk. <laughs> that he did not go to bed with. That is how bad some of these hangovers have been. I was, uh, Greg wasn't even there. I know. No, that, was, know. That, was, that was early. That was, yeah, that was that was self-inflicted wounds. <laughs> yes, it was. Go ahead, that, Jeff. That guy paid us several times to not race, but sleep <laughs> one off in our RV. Yep. That's so best best teammate ever. Best teammate ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Were you going to say something else, Jeff? I, I was. I was going to okay, say that mentioned that we were doing the E1R Atlantic City bingo. And technically, when he got better, it didn't qualify for the 2, two o'clock rally. rally because it was way <laughs> past 2 o'clock. Yes, bingo was awesome. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching our many videos. Uh, this is a different kind of racing, and we di- I didn't know it existed until Bruce came on our scene. So hopefully you enjoyed learning more about it, and hopefully we'll have him on our show someday, because I thought that might be a fun idea. Uh, also, we had a photo contest of our breakfast sandwiches that were confirmed at 2.15 a.m. Sunday morning. 
Uh, even though the explanation which uh, sandwich is which guesses were wrong after Jeff gave the answer. My favorite post on there was Eric, our, our BFF, Eric, uh, said, well, now that you explained it, it's all very clear. I guess I missed the everyone racers eating 101. Uh, we did not have that show. Uh, very funny. So uh, I'm glad you all tried to pick whose sandwich was what. Go ahead, Jeff. I just got to say, if we did everyone racers eating 101, would a hash brown sandwich around a sausage <laughs> patty at two in the morning in McDonald's be on it? <laughs> nor, would, nor would a grilled English muffin between a sandwich show up in a, on in a Christmas hamburger, Eve right? or whatever you were eating. No, none of the sandwiches that showed up uh, because they were only would a you, good idea in would Atlantic you start City. With McDonald's, no one would eat at McDonald's ever. <laughs> we really like McDonald's at two fifteen a.m. Yes. Anyway, uh, lastly, uh, GRM, OG, and Buddy Mikey White uh, respected our hash brown sandwiches on Instagram. Insta yep. what? It's right. usually more of a Waffle House All Star Special at two in the morning kind of guy, but he can he can appreciate the the McDonald's. If we had that, morning. we would have done that, but we yep. didn't. Because. <clears throat> okay. Also, Eric, uh, he gave, he left us a review on Facebook that said, and I quote, by far the best podcast out there related to racing in general. Great personalities, fun times, and very applicable and topical information. Hey, thanks, buddy. Any chance you want to throw that up on iTunes and help us out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, Sean, oh, yes. yes. No. Re- just a reminder, uh, all of these reviews are great. But they only count on face on uh, iTunes. iTunes. Sh- Sean Sprague's posted on our page, not on iTunes. What's his problem? Looking at the <laughs> racing you're at this weekend, our family is enjoying motorsports as well. Here at the Rolex in Daytona, I, he said he hopes to meet us one day. Very loyal listener in Florida. I think this is the first time we've heard from Sean, right? Well, hey, but welcome. Thanks, Shout Sean. Out. Great welcome, to have Sean. you. And uh, I hope you stay dry at the end of the race there. And he, had response, his, he had his kid with him. Yeah. yeah. Which is even better. Get the whole family there. In response to last week's segment, Jeff is an a-hole, our friend Craigers <laughs> said. That's a quote. You forgot to ask Jeff the most important question. Did he move the seat before he got out of the other person's Mazda 3? If he did, then he's the a-hole. Poor runner gets in the car with no idea how the seat moved. Uh, I can positively report that I did not move the seat. I can negatively report that I am probably an a-hole because upon further review, <gasps> the Mazda what? 3 is the other gray and the sedan. <laughs> <laughs> and as we know, <laughs> mine is a long, long move for life, and I didn't even <laughs> notice that it was oh the God. wrong body oh. style. Oh. Right ear, wrong body style. I'm an a-hole. You're oh. at Mazda Club. You're out, buddy. That's I, it. I, Oh when they're parked, you only see the hood. I don't know. It had big, it lame. Had big trucks next to it. Lame. I'm lame. That's because you drive a boring car that you can confuse with someone else's. There's no, your problem. Or... Mm-hmm. No way. <laughs> I, I, I will uh, fix that. I'm going to get some rally lights on it. <laughs> main topic time. And before we, we get into this main topic, and this is going to be great, uh, these are some fascinating watercolors behind you, Eric. Did you do those? Are those family generated? Those are awesome. Actually, yes. One's my wife and one's mine. And we went to those uh, one of those uh, come drink some wine and maybe throw some stuff on a canvas. And uh, so we've done several of them, uh, the wife and I and the kids. And uh, actually, Your kids kinda, are drinking wine and painting. Good exactly. Uh, they did a summer camp out there. Uh, <laughs> my older daughter is a Girl Scout and made a project out of it for some less privileged kids to uh, do some painting classes with them. So it worked out that good. Fantastic. That Girl is Scouts awesome. is great. Did you hear that, Chrissy? <laughs> I threw you a bone. You mean, I'm rolling my eyes at you. <laughs> I, I actually heard her roll her eyes. I didn't see it. Main <laughs> <laughs> topic time. Putting us back on tra- schedule. Chris. Great. So we're going to talk about video. That's why we got Eric here because Eric – actually knows how to do this stuff, mostly because he's already made all the mistakes for you. So let him spend all the bajillions of dollars doing the wrong things first. And now I let him tell us how to do this right, because certainly we don't really know what we're doing. Half the time, we don't even get the GoPros in the car. And the other half the time, they don't work. (laughs) There's no sound. Like, we're lucky if we have something to look at later. So, you know, like... We and and then we don't this. do anything with it. We don't we just like if we post it up, it's like a five hour thing yeah. on Facebook and or it, on uh, 
YouTube, YouTube. with an hour and a half of it is looking at the hood, the hood up because we're yeah. working on something. <laughs> and like, it mostly just takes up space in Jeff's hard drive or Jim's hard drive. Jim's That's hard drive. Pretty yeah. much all it does. Mental, yes. Now, and we're, we came up with this, sh- well, we, he came up with this show idea after we talked about video last year, and he sent us a four-page document, 10-point <laughs> font, 10-point font, four-page document, and we read this, and I still don't understand it, and I used to fly on an airplane with radar, so we wanted to bring him on there, so we're going to oh, watch. Oh, he's got it in front of a lot. lot. Wow. <laughs> he's showing us on the video that That's none of you can see on the kill. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that is so so we're we're gonna try and start as basic as possible and we realized again that we're gonna have to have him on again once we get the basis established and move on to this graduate level stuff because you you are seriously next level and we provided a link to one of your in-car videos and your YouTube channel to show what's on there. Right, in the show notes. Yeah, the the, the quote that I summed it up with when I was writing my notes out was how do not spend cubic money screwing up like we already have, because I've made all these mistakes. And I'm not going to say we're perfect, but, you know, we, we've already made all these mistakes. And so the first thing is to buy the right camera. Um, it doesn't have to be the most expensive, but it does have to be the most supported. And I've talked to people before when they say, well, you know, I've called GoPro, I called this, you know, I didn't like their support, blah, blah, blah. That's okay, but supported doesn't mean what – the person in Indonesia will tell you because when you call them up and you're like, yeah, I'm up to hour 12 and uh, my data isn't synchronizing. They're going to go. Uh, yeah, that's not my book, dude. Um, have, you, have you rebooted? So, have you restarted? Right, exactly. Have, have you rebooted? Um, so, I mean, the, the, the cameras that are well known out there that have support, if you're looking for a camera on wish.com, you're looking in the wrong spot. No, if you're looking, how do they always know what I want? Exactly. <laughs> It's always like a sex toy and then a like a, 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 a some sort of race car thing and then like I don't know. A Honda CD. And then like a diet coke. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> they know the you so well. Have zero support. So, you know, if you're looking at it and you can't find a website where that makes that camera, you probably need to steer away from that camera. Uh, the other thing that we run into with some of those cheap cameras is they have a 32 gig wall at uh, how large a, a card you can put in them. So if you're trying none of this oh, stuff, I mean, if, even terrible. if you spun it all the way down, uh, you can't get the hours and hours of video that we want on a 32 gig card. So uh, Troy and I kind of went two different directions. Uh, we both started off with GoPros. GoPros have their issues, but I go back to that support. There's a lot of people that know how to make a GoPro work. And then, so Troy got tired of the GoPros and went to the Verb cameras which is a competitor, and I kept down the GoPro mainly just because he was figuring out the verb and I was figuring out the GoPro. It gave us two different directions rather than following each other around. Um, we tried some off-brand cameras. Uh, one is the GetUp camera. Uh, the other is the Yi. Both of them are Chinese knockoff cameras. The Yi is a little bit better, and you'll see it uh, this year. They've got some streaming that's actually working, so you can live stream from a car. Um so that, that's, that's cool. That does a lot. Do you do you guys live stream? Because I've we seen not, your stuff on YouTube. Yeah, we do not yet. Uh, we have not found anyone that wants to watch seven hours of our stupidity or nine hours or twelve hours of our stupidity. There's probably dozens of people who right. do, but th- but they're yep. all in the, they're all in the paddock with you, right? Already. So uh, the bigger problem is that we've looked at. So there's two that will do live streaming that will do it in the camera. There's other options outside the camera, and those are really really expensive. But the two that will do it in the camera are the Hero 7 and the E. The Hero 7 has issues. Um, you run into things like the fact that YouTube has a uh, upper limit of four hours. So that's as long as your stream's going to go. And you're dead at that oh. I, I know uh, young Chris Egan from uh, – what the heck is his team name? Why am I blanking? Um, Futility Motorsports. Futility Motorsports has tried <laughs> streaming uh, several times from his Saab and has had mixed results, but that was always, you know, he's setting up Wi-Fi in his yep. car and, you know, the the amount of electronics looks like Mentals plane. So, <laughs> yeah, the E and the Hero 7 both will reportedly do it, but the Hero 7, you know, it's pretty fresh, pretty fr- new camera. It really won't today, especially like what you want to do. That's the other thing we run into with a lot of these is that a lot of these cameras are are shot at 
were aimed at the people that are doing, you know, skateboard tricks. And if he misses it once, well, after his leg heals, we'll, we'll do it again. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, us trying to get a camera to run for 12 or 14 hours in a single stint and stay powered up and not fall over and, you know, not crap a card or something else is, is a difficulty. Go ahead, Jeff. So, um, if you like, you gave us a bunch of camera names there. If you had to boil it down yeah. to like the two ones that you think are the most successful for people to look at, which are the two that you think? GoPro go Hero Five. Okay. Notice I didn't say the newer ones. Yeah. Because the newer ones don't have a lot of the features that we would use or care about. Uh, and the Verb XE, which is actually an out of production camera, um, those are the two that we're using right now. The the Hero 6 and 7 will do what we want to do, but you're paying money for features that we're not going to use. You're not going to stream at 4K. We're not going to store at 4K. The Hero 7 has the really cool... Um, uh, Wi-Fi? Well, yeah, so they were throwing smoothing. words, sorry. Smoothing. Okay, the smoothing, yeah. the smoothing oh, yeah. 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 So okay. uh, we're, we turn that stuff off when we're using them in the cars. Uh, okay, So right good. now the Hero 5... The Hero 5 has data in it, which we're kind of not really going to talk about because that's advanced. But the Hero 5 has data built into it, as well as the Verb XC. So even if you're just used that at a basic level, uh, which the data in it is 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 uh, one hertz, so one update a second. But that gives you basic. Hey, uh, you know, we were doing 129 down the straight. Is it you know truly 129? Eh, you might be off by five, but it's good enough for good enough. you know the Monday morning around the office type situation. Yeah, and and uh, that's that rendering stuff that I read about in your thing, right? Like that's where you can get the like you, you use the term rendering like four times, and I know just because I like third paragraph in, I said, "Oh, race render, we use that." <laughs> right. Uh, that, so, that's getting yeah. The you start stuff off on with the video. You right? start off with this big wad of of nine million little MPEG files that come off these cameras and a massive amount of data. And how do you make that work? Well, the first thing you're gonna do if you own a GoPro or Verb is try to pull that in, and it's going to go, this is not a 20-minute skating video. I don't know what to do, and die. So you end up having to go third-party. Uh, third-party, which is Race Render, is what we're using. Um, there's also um, Dashware is another product. Verb has their built-in one that comes with the camera. It's not too bad. It'll do most of what you want. Um, but the, the advantage of those is it allows you to pull all the data together, but it also all of those will allow you to pull not only the pictures, but the data below it. So the hero actually stores the data with the video. So it's always synchronized. Every frame is has data under it. The verb stores it in a separate file. What do you and, mean by that? I'm sorry. What do you mean by that? What's the da- is so, it the data, like the race data, or is it right. it's the, the track, like with Harry's, yeah. that kind of thing? Okay. Yeah, your speed and your GPS location, it actually does it all through GPS and figures it out later. So, so it the, basically just has all the GPS location. So the it has a GPS built into it, or is it plot. pulling from somewhere else? Get the new dot. Uh, Hero 567 and the Verb all have GPS built in. Mm. Now, they're all low-speed GPS, so you only get an update every second. Yeah. So it's not good enough that you can say, hey, this guy was faster through this corner, or this guy where you would use a traditional data system. But again, it's good enough to go, okay, we were, you know, Again, it's the Monday morning at the executive office, and you're like, hey, look what I did this weekend. It impresses yeah. that level of people. And and I know that Race Render, which is a third-party software you mentioned, will yeah. will draw the little track map and put the little dot that goes around like you would see on a you know, a TV broadcast. Right. So, And the advantage of once you make that step to Race Render, which generally for what we do, you kind of need to be on one of those products. But once you get into one of those products – when you start using a high-level data product, no matter what it is, that data can be pulled in and overlaid on your video. So now you actually do have high-frequency data that you can actually say, okay, this guy was faster through the corner, this guy was closer to the line, that kind of thing. You're using that same tool to start to correlate, and that's that's the big word here is correlate what's happening on the track with what the car is doing. All right, so race render will that lets you put them together, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lets you put the put the video with all the data. Yeah. And we, I, we, we've had situations where we've had screw ups before, and uh, mental asks why we run multiple cameras in the same car. Part of it's because this is very experimental and very hobbyist. So we would have one camera that would crap out or lose data or whatever else. 
Well, we had four other devices in the car, and with race render and with a little timing and a lot of time, we could take data from one camera and the picture that worked on another and munge those together and come out with a product. Mm, interesting. It's cool. very so, possible. So we run Harry's lap timer and we yes. run the faster GPS dots. Yep. So um, I assume that's what you're running, the faster GPS dots, right? Yeah, we have a couple different products because, of course, we all own cars and we all have our own data systems. So it's been nice to be able, and, you know, it's still a hobby. So depending on whose data system we're using, whether it's Harry's or we've got a couple others that are professional level, um, that are that same 20 hertz data rate or using an external GPS provider getting those higher data rates. But I'll say with all of this, the, the biggest thing that I can tell you about all of this is to bench test. You know, I've got lots of video of my my countertop with the camera sitting on it, aiming at a at a uh, at a clock, and I know how long this battery pack that that uh, eBay says will last 19 hours. I know how long that battery pack will actually last. Hmm. I know how long the camera will actually seriously. Last. What? So so back That's up. That's smart. So you, what? Okay, this was one of my questions actually. Right. You you just. <laughs> Matt, Matt Mental's talking to his wife now. Sorry right. about that. Yeah. Um, okay, so you bench test. You actually see before you put get in the car. This exactly. is the smartest thing ever. You get in the, before you get in the car. You test it. Right. Okay. So okay. you can do stuff that you know you can set it up on your counter. And I I, I made fun of Troy because he ordered some battery packs off of the internet. And they say there's this Witch. many more hours, which is how many Witch. pictures. Are yeah, in. that's right next to your Wish.com Witch. right there. Witch. Right. Battery packs. And I look at them and I'm like, dude, that is not physically possible for it to have that much energy in this little package. No, so, but it says it says so on the internet. Yeah, it says it right there. And so, and then you have other things like temperature. When we went to Atlanta, the temperature of the batteries killed the battery life. Hmm. With so, the temperature yeah. being down so, so low. How how much battery do you suggest people look at to get one camera through a day or a weekend like i know it's it's a tough question because of things like which camera and how much draw and what temperature right. is and things like that but at a basic level where do you like where's the floor you need to get above but before well, you so answer i just want to mention that i am checking off on my bingo card someone <laughs> skips chrissy <laughs> And because that was totally your question. It was it's my question. question. I erased totally it because he was like, you don't need to ask that question before the show started. So <laughs> I erased it. And this was my question, which I think is a great question. Please I'm answer it. I'm trying to clarify. My, my, my eye just got poked out because she's poking all of us through the, the internet camera. <laughs> I'm checking skipped Chrissy I on my bingo. I was trying to clarify what Chrissy had started, and I felt it needed a little more clarification. That's all. All right. I'll shut up answer now, honey. Better. Okay, so we have several engineers in our race team. Well, that's all a problem. Of them, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> one is okay. Several, yeah, no, too many. One is bad. Two is worse. Right, okay. um, so yeah, We have zero engineers, just a lot of smart people. <laughs> that, I could go with that. So it's in data you trust. Everything else is a guess, right? So that's where that bench test comes from. You can get very inexpensive uh, little adapters that you put between the battery pack and your camera, and you can actually watch and see what that camera draws and do a little math, and it's just a math problem. If your Ooh. camera draws 423 what? milliamp hours and you need the camera to last 10 hours, you need 4,000 milliamp hours plus some buffer. This is so smart. It's just I a math. <laughs> but you just have then, to have the tool and then to you know. Set it, it. And then you do your bench test yeah. and go, okay, does that really work? Is there something else going on here? If after the camera's up for 20 minutes, does it start drawing like two amps and create a big problem, right? So that's where the bench testing comes in. Do, do you like look at <clears throat> – does your when you're doing these on your counter, do you show like the amp hours and the clock at the same time? Yeah, yeah. So, I yeah. mean, you've got a camera. Sometimes you have two cameras. So you just aim them at each other, plug one in the wall so it won't die. And then when it finally does die, you look at the video and go, okay, that's where it died. Now I know. And, hey, look at that. At the end, it was drawing squat for power, so I know the curve actually drops off. Hmm. So, again, you're pulling data. And then so the other thing is that that's the countertop. Okay, now pop it in the car. I'm sure you're going somewhere, maybe not 10 hours. I'm sure you're going somewhere. Put it in your 107-degree car, roll the windows up, and record your driveway for 10 hours. Does it work then? 
it's, because this that is brilliant. Makes a big this is difference. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it it's so it's so simple. Right. Why haven't we thought of it before? Well, because we, and we would get to where we set all everything up and made some assumptions, and we put it in the race car and send the race car on its merry way. Well, you can't touch that system. If something happens, you can't reboot it. Hopefully, you haven't broken it. You're on the side and you're in the paddock going, <laughs> we can do whatever we want to the camera, right? Hopefully, that's not the situation. Hopefully, I, the car's I, out there running, running, running. I'd like to mention that I can reboot an iPad if I can take my race glove off <laughs> as long as it's within reach. Chrissy, are you okay with that? Or? <laughs> no, I'm then not. you are it's driving. So- too slow, Jeff. I, <laughs> I just do it on the streets. I just you're, you're driving distracted, and that's a problem. Yeah, yeah. I know why yeah. we the answer to your question of why we haven't done this because we don't think about the GoPro until Saturday morning. We go, oh <laughs> crap, we gotta get the GoPro at Jim. Where's Jim? Get him over here. Where's the GoPro? I got the battery. I need three um, zip, zip ties time. right now. Yes. <laughs> That's why we're yeah. we're we're blown away by this because don't we have done this. We have we have no idea when it died. Uh, we don't got bother to go back to. Oh, I'm sorry. When the battery has died, we say, "Oh shoot! It's the end of the day, and we have we have no video. How much video do we have? Uh, I don't know. A couple hours. Um, and then we have no. We never figure out why it died. Who's how much we should have charged it when we should have swapped it and we still don't so this this benchmarking is like mind blown yeah and i'll say right now that when i first started with videos i was in carting and it was when we first started doing helmet cameras and it got to where i had to you know make my mind think of the reason that you're out here is to cart not to play with the stupid camera so you have to also have to remember that when we're out here racing lemons the idea is to race lemons. If the cameras work, the cameras work, and you're trying to get all of those failures done before you get to the track. So you know, so you're able to, with confidence, put it in the car, plug it in, push the button, and leave it alone and not touch it. And then be confident that when you go back to it at the end of the day, it will still be powered on. You'll be ready to turn it off. Mm-hmm. But the primary thing is is the cars. In Atlanta, it was cold. Uh, Troy took a camera that had a battery in it that might have been two hours, jammed a battery pack behind it that he had, you know, stuffed behind his seat, jammed it in there, plugged it in, strapped it on, pushed the button and hoped because we didn't spend a whole lot of time messing it w- with it. We had other things that we were working on. So that happens. You know, like becoming national friggin' champions. <laughs> Sometimes it happens by mistake. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, I, I am looking. I, I ran upstairs during the podcast right. and grabbed our, our our GoPro setup that I we took to California, and never got in the car. By the way, <laughs> so we have these yep. giant anchor batteries that my brother bought. I I can't even find the rating on it. Like how how do you know which equipment does what? Like. So you go to, uh, again, whatever it says on it probably doesn't mean squat. So you go to YouTube, or I'm sorry, go to Amazon, and you get the little USB interceptor. And what it is, it has a male, a female, and a little gauge in the middle. And you plug your phone into it. And your phone will draw a certain amount of amps out of your unknown battery pack. And you time how long it takes to charge your phone. And again, some little math, you can tell how much that thing will actually do, regardless of what it says on the side. Yeah, don't trust what it says on the side or what Amazon says or what all the fake reviewers well, because, have yeah, said. Well, because how much of this is coming from eight-year-olds making stuff in a third-world country? So no, that, exactly. that, that's 100% valid. And, and those, the 12-year-olds typing the reviews on Amazon. <laughs> you, you know, and I, I talk about the fact that, you know, the cameras don't buy them from Wish or from unknown sources. The problem with the battery packs is it's, you can't buy one from a known source. You've got to buy one that looks good, that has some hope, and then you have to go back and test it because you can't go, oh, well, I bought this EverReady battery, and I know it's good, and it's an awesome brand because in the battery pack business, it's all the low bottom, and there's there's nobody you can count on. It's yeah. cheap because mm. it's cheaper to send you a replacement than to build a exactly. quality product. Yeah. Mm. yeah. My, my brother swears by Anchor. Anchor. That's right. the battery. Yeah, there's some bigger but, brands out there. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Jack. So if I were looking at on Amazon right now, would I be looking for something like a <laughs> inline voltage and current meter for USB? Yes. Is that the kind of thing? Okay. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Right. I can hear you clicking. Click, click. Oh, we, can, we can all see Chris's eyes kind of dart to the side if I was on Amazon now. <laughs> yeah, and they have little counters that'll be, okay, what's it drawing right now? 
and a cumulative counter. So even if it dies and you're not there, the cumulative counter goes, okay, this thing spit out this much power. And you can go, okay, now, you know, before I unplug it, okay, that's what that one will do. And then cycle them a couple times or go through the various ones that you have and see what they'll actually do. So you don't run any of this stuff plugged into the car. Right. So I was going to mention that is that uh, we, you know, the first thing that you think about when you're setting these up is I've got this huge car and a huge battery and everything. And part of the reason we did not do it initially uh, was because we were running the radios through the cameras on the car and we would get back feed sounds and weird things happening and pops and whistles and the alternator. And then we had a problem with one car that it just decided it wanted to overcharge all the time. It would send like 21 volts through stuff. Lemon's car. not a Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was why we started not running off the car. Well, what we found is that when we when we ran standalone, when we shut the car off, doesn't matter. We turn the car on. There's a surge there. Doesn't matter. You know, it was very much brought more of that set it in the morning, let it run, forget it type situation to where we did not have to worry about the interface with the car. Totally makes sense. I, I, I would love to say that's why we run batteries. But the reason we run batteries is where we wanted to mount the camera. We didn't have any power near it. Exactly. So yeah. it just became easier when we're, you know, when we're we're running in through IOE cars that we didn't have to, you know, find the mental scratch now what? on the video what is that? Uh, but we didn't have to find the power like to the back seat of you know the rolls royce exactly and then worry about that shorting out or doing something weird exactly well, because because the power would just be sufficient yeah, yeah. the batteries yeah, yeah. can Go we uh, can i make a segue from what you were just talking about to uh, sure. mount, mounts so you said both of you are doing different places. Where is a good place to um, mount to? Uh, I think roll cage is probably your answer, but do you have anything better than that? Um, and a mount goes with your camera. You get the specific one. Can we just segue into how we mount a camera? Exactly. So there's a couple things to remember. First is in lemons, your, your first thing that you have to worry about is the idiot that has his entire body stuffed through the side that is trying to strap in the driver that's probably going to clobber your camera. So that's the yes. first thing. Is the camera has to be <laughs> on that one. That's never happened before. <laughs> right. Or uh, the, so the mirror. Next thing you need to worry or about or is, the mirror. Yep, I broke yeah. the mirror. <laughs> the next thing you need to worry about is how it is vertically. And I think you've seen videos out there where it looks like there's a four-year-old kid sitting in the passenger seat and all you can see is sky. And on the other side, there's there's one that's stuck to the roof of the car shooting downwards. And all you can see, the farthest thing you see ahead is the front headlights. So you need to be somewhere in the middle. And where I start at is two-thirds of the height of the window. So if I look at the side of the car and I go, okay, the car side window is this high. And I go, okay, I need to go up two-thirds or down one-third, wherever you want to think about it. That's about where I want the camera. Hmm. Now, okay. left to right, I want to see what the driver's doing. And then I want to be able to see down track. So left to right, I just want to be able to see the driver's hands. Sometimes the gauges, if I can get them, although usually it's dark. And when we've tried to read the gauges later, it's, you know, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, But that's the main thing is the height and making sure it's out of the way of the monkey crawling in the passenger window. Okay. So when you have found that perfect spot where it should be and there's no roll cage and there's nothing around exactly where you would like it to be. Now, what do you do? So what I've done, the mounts that I use, because I like to mount to the roll cage, regardless of how far away it is, I use uh, what are the off-road guys use to mount headlights and big spotlights on the front of their trucks. And they have little rubber mountings inside to keep the vibration down. And they, they look like they're bomb-proof. And they wrap around roll cage tubing perfectly, because that's what they're meant for. And I use one or two of those, sometimes I run an aluminum square tube between those two if I can't get my favorite spot. So I'll have two mounts on two parts of the roll cage and and an aluminum square in the middle and then a GoPro mount in the middle of all that, which is another reason to have GoPros or verbs, and I think everybody's doing it now, is that I have, you know, a box of GoPro, you know, this is and that's and ups and downs and sideways. It's so ubiquitous now that you, I mean, you can go to Amazon, yep, Yeah, you can go to Amazon and buy, you know, a metric, you know, ass ton of them. And then there you go. Click it and $4.99 later, it's on your doorstep. Um, I had a situation where 
We wanted it essentially where the passenger's eyeballs were, for lack of a better reason. So that was in the middle of a passenger seat. Troy's car has a passenger seat in it. So I did not have this, this before I had all this other stuff. So I had a little linky dink of like seven different little GoPro extensions and it wound around the side of the seat and put the camera in essentially where the passenger's eyeballs would be. Good. I would like to add Linky Dink yeah. to the bingo card for next week because I think I'm going to start using that forever. <laughs> <laughs> or at least with your students. So, the, you know, the big thing with the camera mounts is they need to be secure. I mean, you, you almost need to be able to hang off of them. But somewhere in that mount, you need a vibration brake. Damper, yeah, a rubber yeah. piece or something to keep the vibration from going through the camera because we found uh with all these cameras and i haven't tried a seven yet all of them you cannot use the motion or shake reduction you've got to turn all that stuff off because it does not work for what we do why so uh because it brings the view down the view moves around so people get sick because it, it feels like the camera's it, it not moves. true far yeah. anymore yeah. Okay. Um, and because the, the shaking just makes it blurry, brings mm. the frame rate down. Okay. Whereas if you solid mount it, it'll hold that frame rate at 60 frames a second. Whereas if you turn on the shake reduction, it may drop frames if there's movement to try to keep the shake down. Mm. Uh, n- just going back a little bit, we're, these off-road clampy like devices, is something. there a brand or do you now, just do you Google something? What's What's the term if I need to find it? Yeah, eBay or Amazon, uh, headlight mounts, uh, fog light mounts, uh, off-road light mounts. And they're usually, they have like two Allen screws that go in and wrap all the way around the bar. And they come with like 14 little rubber inserts that fit in there so you can fit on all the different sizes. Different size tubes. tubes, yeah. Right, yeah. which you only need one of them. And then they have a tab that sticks off about an inch or two. And that tab's an inch by an inch. And you just go at it with your drill and mount right up onto that. Yeah, I found something called a LED off-road light horizontal bar clamp mounting kit, and it comes with one inch, one and a half inch, inch and three quarter, and two inch clamps, and yeah, it looks exactly like that. So that's that's twelve they, bucks they, or two. Uh, they have horizontal and vertical. Some sometimes the uh, horizontal ones work better than the vertical ones because of the way the tabs are oriented. Mm. Now, Chris, I just, is, Chris is that. actually shopping right now. He's right. Really, his, his <laughs> inbox is getting full. Yeah. Unless it's I don't have to do it later. <laughs> I would be like, what did it, what, was it, what should I have Googled? So, so now Wish is going to have off-road lights <laughs> right next to your marital products. <laughs> Only you, Jeff, have marital products. <laughs> so I bought one with a horizontal tab, got my drill out, and drilled a vertical tab. So that one I can mount either way on the bar. Mm. Um, the, the last piece that you need is some type of uh, – sometimes they show up like a ball or – Sometimes you can use two GoPro quinky dinks <laughs> um, because once you put it on the bar, like especially if you put it on the sidebar, now your camera is like a 30 degree angle and you need to bring that back vertical. Also otherwise, remember, you, otherwise it looks like a Batman villain. Right. And also remember that you can hang that camera bat mode from the uh, upper bar. So you can run two or three links down from the upper bar and hang the camera bat mode and shoot upside down and flip it in post or some of the cameras will flip them now automatically hmm. cool, cool. I, i'm gonna switch switch topics again so now you've got an awesome mount you've turned off your frame your frame rate is great you, you've got all this hey I'm, 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 I'm gonna jump in with something real quick so hold oh, that up because i want to segue right into this because i think it's probably one of the most important things is the memory card that you stick in that Ooh, camera good mm, call okay. do that We've seen, and I, I've been through the GoPro forums and some of the other support forums working on other issues, or the two things that will stop your camera from working, assuming you got power to it and assuming it's not physically broken, are, and this is higher, is a bad memory card, and then overheating. So overheating is make sure your battery's charged and get air to it. Maybe you run an open case. That's pretty easy to fix. The memory cards. So... When you look at those cards, if you're on Wish, okay, get off a of Wish and go over to Amazon <laughs> <laughs> and do a search for SanDisk and start there or one of the other name brands. But the memory cards that are sold, even some of the better ones, if you call SanDisk, and I was surprised I, I went to warranty out a card, and they said, what are you using this in? I said, uh, my point-and-shoot camera. And they are like, good, because this one is not rated for 
continuous use, like in car cameras or rear view cameras or oh, other things. Oh, so, so live. I said, I said, oh, really? So there is a difference in they as to what data rate they will maintain over time. So you need to be above what the camera will spit out. And that's another thing that you go to look at. And Troy and I have been round and round. He's like, you know, here's an example. I run at 1080, 30 frames or 1080, 60 frames. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't take much math to figure out that the 30 frames is half the data and the 60 frames is double the data, right? Yeah, of course. Except for if you're in a GoPro. If you're using a GoPro and a GetUp, I'll talk about that in a second. If you're using a GoPro, both of those video formats are stored in the card in the same format. Both of those will be the same size on the card. Both of them will write at the same data rate to your card. It just so how reduces do you, the pixel count, right? Right. Well, it doesn't even do that. Once it goes to the card, what it records off the off the data chip, the video chip in the camera, is different from what it writes to the card. So there's you can go into the specs. Some of the better cameras will tell you what it at each resolution, what does it write at, what speed does it write at. And it'll say like 35 megabytes per second. But, again, back to is that reality, is it not? is jam a card in there, record for an hour, see how big that file is. If if you record for an hour and your file is 35 gigabytes, you record at 35 gigabytes per hour. And you can back that out into what it, what it is per second. Now you need to find a card that will write sequentially at that speed. And then you can go in, you have to do the specs of the cards. There's some testing uh, utilities that you can do after you get a card to make sure that it's a real card because that's a big problem. You know, I get, go on to Amazon and I grab a 200 gig card and I'm like, cool, this looks great. You know, it's in the it's in the SanDisk, you know, little uh, bubble pack. It looks perfect and everything. But anytime we've seen lots of them where it comes in and it's counterfeit card, you stick it in a machine and it goes, yeah, it's a 200 gig card. And you run the little testing utility against it. Again, just some Google searches. You run a testing utility against it and it goes, oh, actually, no, this is a two meg card that has a little bit written in it. And when it gets to two gigs, it just keeps overwriting that bit, that last bit. And it just keeps going and makes you think it's a 200 gig card. It's really a counterfeit card. Those same utilities will tell you what the card's actual performance is also. So that's another good reason to run that utility. Do you have Proof. a real card? And and what speed will it actually write at? Proof yeah. the internet is full of a-holes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and, and, Amazon sucks now because they are are they're getting their butt kicked by like um, Ali AliExpress Alibaba and so now they're allowing these international sellers to hide that they're international. So you could be buying from a guy in California or a guy in China, and you know they're not going to be able to close that guy in China's account because again he has the fleet of twelve year olds who are just reopening new accounts. Right, and so. You know, the other thing is the sniff test. So we, we bought a 256-gig card because we wanted 24 hours for the 24-hour race. So Troy is like, well, I found this one on eBay for $35. I'm like, Troy, the lowest price that card is is like $80 on Amazon and $90 or $100 at every other. What makes you think you're going to be able to buy it from eBay for $35? Well, let me try it. He bought it, and it was <laughs> you know, an 8 gig with a little overwrite trick. You know? Play, play okay. stupid games, win yeah. stupid prizes. Yeah. Does it pass a sniff test? Go ahead now. So, all right. And this has actually been awesome. <laughs> but I, I want to I center it back to some yep. of our listener base. Let's say, like, for example, I'm, I don't know, a chemical engineer. <laughs> and I just I just started racing. And I've got you ceramist, know, a ceramist, ceramist, a ceramist, ceramist. <laughs> and I've got my wife and my kids in this. Give me five things I need to buy right now that I can build upon in the future, but will give me very, very basic data to improve my racing. OK, hero five, six or seven, whatever strikes your fancy. If the wife's buying it, it's a seven. OK, <laughs> and the wife is buying it. Right. Some kind of external battery pack. Maybe two. Um, bigger, better. Again, you're going to have to kind of play this game. I buy it from Amazon. That way when you get it and it doesn't pass the test, you can bounce it back to them and try again. Um, when you're doing searches for those, the battery the battery packs that are based on 18650 technology, and I know that's a technical term, 
But if you type in 18650 battery pack, you will find battery packs out there that use replaceable cells, and you can choose the size that you want based on the cells that you put in. So 18650 battery technology. Um, so you need that, uh, you know, a grab bag of mounts. Uh, I would get the get some type of roll bar mount, even if you just get one. Usually they come as pairs, so that's fine. Um, and that'll get you started. Uh, and a good good uh, high speed card. I was gonna the say the card. cards are uh, they'll have the nomenclature on them will be V30, which means it's a video and it will write at 30, uh, 30 megs per second. I think is what the quote is, but it's V30. That's the fast cards right now. That, awesome. That's like the 10C thing. Like that used to yeah. be the faster ones, right? But now yeah. V30. V30 like, is the current current spec. And then how big? Um, if you're if you're writing at uh, 1080 60, you need at least a 128 gig card. But at this point, I would buy a 256 for future proofing. Okay. And Jeff's got a question about software. Uh, no, I, I was gonna say like, like Can't, what is the basics once you have the video? Like right. we're we're right now like we have tons of video, but we do nothing with it. Like what what is your theory? You know, what are your favorite softwares? What are, you, what are you doing once you have it on your computer? You dropped it on your laptop. What's the next move? Okay, so you got this 120 or probably almost nearly 300 gigs worth of data that you got to play with if it's two days plus practice. And so you can use the GoPro tools. That'll that'll get you the basics. Um, you can get the basic race render for free. Um, Dashware is free now. I would suggest just going to either one of those products and pulling the data in. And that's your first thing is, is pull because the way the cameras will store it is in a million little itty bitty files. Step one, pull it all into a single file, re-render it. Now you've got something you can work with. Um, what you do with it after that, um, there's, I'll give you two different schools of thought. Troy's school of thought is I don't have a lot of time to be playing with this. I'm going to lop off the beginning. I'm going to lop off the end. I'm going to pull it into race render and munge it a little bit. And then the next thing I'm going to do is upload that big, massive wad over the next five days up to YouTube. And someone out there, if they want to see their stint or see some section, they can fast forward to three hours in or four hours in or wherever they want to go. But and that That's what we are doing currently. Yeah. But without any render. We're just so, literally putting up raw video. Yeah, raw data. So the other side of that, which I've done in the past and takes more time, is to use Race Render or Adobe Premiere or your favorite video editing program. Those are my my two suggestions, but use your favorite. And take, and someone has to watch the video, which is sometimes painful, but you can watch it usually in Fast Forward in the editing program. And Fast Forward until there's some cars around and go, okay, there's a cut spot and cut out the, the space where you're out there driving around in circles or there's nothing interesting happening, right? So you watch and you're like, oh, there's some cars around, cut. Okay, let me watch, 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 watch. Okay, the cars have gone away, I'm back to boring spots, cut. And what you end up with is you once you cut out all that dead space, you end up with a shorter video. Highly and then do a second pass and go, okay, is there actually something happening in here? Did he say something funny on the radio? Is there something going on? And, and keep cutting that down. And so the last one I did, it was for a cart race that was a six-hour cart race. I had seven and a half hours of video, and I created what I call the super cut, and I think it's 24 minutes long. And it was just the inter interesting stuff where there was a pass, or somebody was near me, or it was the beginning or the end, or a driver change or something like that. And then so you could watch essentially the highlight reel of the entire, you know, of that entire six-hour race in 20 minutes. That's cool. Very hmm. cool. And for obviously the Everyone Racers podcast will suggest that someone watch every second for driver training purposes. <laughs> exactly. But, but why would you put that on YouTube? Like the driver who drove that stint should watch what they're doing and maybe a second person who can help coach them. There's okay, no reason so, to put that on YouTube. So here's the other thing that we've done uh, the past couple times is somebody ends up with a hotel room. We all end up in a hotel room. And we've got nothing to do between the hours of 8 p.m. after we've done all the car service Hotel and 6 a.m. the next day. And Is we're that all like drinking. an RV, not at the track? Nothing uh, to do yeah, between you know. 8 and 8 o'clock, did you say? They don't have a hot tub, honey. 6 a.m.? 
<laughs> 8 p.m. We're still working on cars. Maybe probably haven't eaten dinner yet. What? Hey, this... We're eating dinner by 8 most yeah. nights. I didn't you want mention... to underestimate our pit mom, Chrissy. I have always eaten by 8 o'clock at a three-pedal oh. mafia oh. race. We're, okay. we're frying turkeys. Oh. I'm still we're... washing dishes. How about still, that? We're washing dishes, definitely. I did mention that the Z threw a rod in the first four hours of used to be. <laughs> <laughs> lots of time. On that race, you had time. Yeah. Uh, so what we've what we've done is, you know, because you're out there and you're running, you're like, dude, I, w- I want to see this, you know, this pass or this happen or or why I went off. Why, why did I go off? What did I do wrong? So we'll fast forward through people's stints and go, oh, see that. And we're all sitting there watching it on a projector in the hotel room or on the TV in the hotel room. Good I just jack the laptop into the TV. And we watch the raw data. And then the next guy goes, OK, OK. Now we need to we need to fast forward to my spot stint whatever happened yeah, and somewhere oh, wait. somewhere that asshole said I passed on yellow and then you go to yeah. oh, there it is who's the asshole now our, our favorite one was for getting uh, yelled at for uh, uh, speeding in the pits and we had GPS in, in in New Orleans I was there <laughs> well this was before that that was those jokers I wasn't there for that <laughs> yeah, okay <laughs> they probably so had a camera on for that one so what happened we were speeding the pits. Uh, New Orleans, uh, we had a issue with the car kind of sputtering at speed, and they thought it was a fuel pump issue. They thought it was a pickup issue. They weren't really sure. They kind of threw some fixes at it, and they're like, well, we don't know if we fixed it. If we send the car out there, some of the brighter engineering nerds in the team said if we send the car out there and it's still well, broken. We better bench tough. test it. Do 60 in the pits, yo. Exactly. So... <laughs> A couple of them decided it might be a good idea to, you know, get a little bit of time on it. And I was like, you know, I've been to New Orleans. There's a long entry road that you could do 40 miles an hour on, you know, safely and be away from everybody. Why in the heck were you running up and down the pits at speed? So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yeah, wow. uh, so, I learned so, more on this episode that like any other one we've done, maybe multiples put together, actually. Yeah, so, my brain uh, is full. Racing dot com. Uh, that's Troy's company. Um, he has the interconnect so that you can uh, start off with just talking radios between your car and your pits in a reliable fashion, and then if you want to go advanced, connecting that same radio traffic into your camera. And and we have that link in our show notes. And one of the things I one of the things I love about the in, uh, not only do we have the link, we have the link to Nerdy Communications YouTube channel. Is not only do you get the radio communications of hey, I'm going to pit next lap, da 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 da, but you actually get the driver when he doesn't click the mic. You get the driver going, "What an asshole!" You know, for the yeah. guy to just that, cut that him would off. Be just oh my, my god, I can't. I talk to myself twenty four <laughs> hours when I'm in the car. We and, did not. We did not realize it, that. Helps. It, it helps. It it is it is actually helpful. Oh, I don't think it helps. No, because it, it's, <laughs> it, it's going to put you in the driver's mindset. Yes. Should something go sideways? Yeah, it. Uh, we did not realize that was going to happen, but because the way the Baofeng radios work, we figured out that the mic is live all the time. And the first couple drivers we stepped in the car, we didn't mention that until they got out of the car, and they're like, "Oh boy." But uh, so at, at Road Atlanta, you know, it was snowing. I was in the 240 uh, SX, and it was we had some tire issues and some other stuff, and it was a bear to drive. And so Troy looks at the video afterwards, and he goes, "You didn't say anything." I was like, "I was concentrating on not dying." But uh, <laughs> all of my video would sound, or all of my audio would sound like. I smell your brake pads, Miata. It <laughs> smells like fear. Mine would mine. be, come on, move it, move it, yes. move, move it. My, so mine not, are, are hilarious. To myself, gas, 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 yep. turbo power, go, 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 go. That's what Chrissy doesn't realize that she keys the mic when she does that. And we no, hear that I do not. That's not true. <laughs> not true. So yours, yours isn't brake, turn in, gas, 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 brake, turn in, gas, 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 brake, oh, no. turn in, gas. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, well. Look at this a-hole. What is he doing? <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> I'm with you, too. I do it. Uh, listen, Eric, you've been amazing. I, I have no idea how long we've been. Has anybody got a time? Should we? 119. About 120, yeah. What, About what one. Is. Okay, so we should probably move on. Clearly, there is a ton more to say. You are definitely going back on the list. 
Yeah, and next dirty, time we can talk about dirty communications.com. N E R D I E communications.com. Links in our show notes. It is a wealth of information. Yeah, awesome. next time we can talk about radios and how to stuff that into your camera. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, we're then definitely we going to have you back for part two. Chrissy say turbo power as she goes, <laughs> even though we're not going to have a turbo anymore. But you can still say it. So. But uh, our, our YouTube likes would go up so many. We, we barely <laughs> even post them. Editing uh, is what we need to do. We need yeah. to start doing those. Yeah, that, that's the tough the, part. The, the, it takes two, so much time. Yeah, the, the several things that I learned here that I know that we are going to be doing is obviously Chris already ordered that little <laughs> electric thing. Uh, I am definitely going to learn how to do some of the video editing and trying to get some render up and uh, definitely do highlight reels because I love watching myself on the video because I'm that kind of guy. Shut up, mental. Like, you don't live in the mirror. <laughs> Working his hair. I just, I just wake up looking like this, baby. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> broke my headphones. Anyway, let's move on. And thank you very much. We'll let you plug anything Seriously, you want right. to. Give us all the plugs. Give us everything. Hey, you know, nerdy's the the what started this mess, and uh, Troy is the center of this. Uh, if you thought I talked a lot and had a lot of, uh, just give Troy a call. He will talk your ear off. But well, he's great about and getting most the, of it will the, be about Civil War reenactments. Because <laughs> that was the first time I met Troy. That's what he and I did till two in the morning at the Texas World Speedway as we started talking war, war stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds great. <laughs> Civil War. It sounds Chrissy. almost as great oh, what, as what, 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 two, two reenactments. Yeah, so, almost uh, as great as. What we're we're gonna segment? we're gonna get to our favorite part of the t- favorite part of the show. It is a lucky week because Chrissy is going to give us just the tip. So Eric, how'd you like that? See what she did? I participated. We 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 love watching Chrissy when we do that. <laughs> she has a color so camera. Oh, okay. So since most of the country is dealing with cold freaking cold or deathly cold temperatures we're going to remind you on some of the things you should do to stay alive in the next couple days um get your winter survival kit out it sucks if your pipes freeze over and no one can help you for days ask me how i know speaking of probably should turn that sink on um make sure you have some water and a whole lot of stuff that you can uh, make you live okay if, if something happens um and also make sure that you have your su- survival kit in your car because that's helpful too. Um, keep covered if you're out. So wind and exposure are your enemy. Heat loss uh, and es- especially the wind is real. Be careful. Dress in layers. The area I like this. I read this on the internet. The air that gets trapped in between each layer holds your body heat like your own personal hot tub. Hot tub, ah, right? Uh, better control over your uh, regulating your body heat. So bundle up. Duh. Uh, avoid sweating and stay dry. Sweating is the way that your body, that's your body's AC. It makes, and that makes you colder. Um, and then mental, I think wrote this survival school training says exactly this. Save sweat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, alcohol does not warm you. It decreases your core temp, even though it might make you feel warm. Because your blood vessels contract. Also an addition for mental. Um, hydrate. So severe cold can be just as dangerous as severe heat. Keep your hands and your feet warm. That's where hypothermia can start with your extremities. I could go on for like a bajillion other bullets. Uh, make sure you're being serious when you go out and try to, or, or staying in for that matter. Make sure you know what's going on on the roads. I didn't mean to talk about driving in the snow, which we could have done a whole other thing on and we have. Uh, but just make sure you're planning for the worst and being smart about it. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Chrissy. Eric has been fantastic this week, and we're doing so well with our guests that we're going to have another one next week. So join us next week when we will have Bill Strong, marketing director for Champ Car, as well as one of the producers and hosts for Champ Car Live, the excellent webcast that they perform at almost every race. Mental is actually going to meet him at his hotel, and they'll both be in the same room as we broadcast Why is that important in the notes? I don't know. Maybe they'll do each other's hair. In fact, we might have several members of their broadcast and marketing team on the show. While they're in town for Road Atlanta next weekend, we'll talk about the Champ Car Series, its efforts to expand, its new marketing partners, as well as their upcoming 14-hour Enduro at Road Atlanta. That is a single day 14 hours. Correct, Mental? Awesome. 
Yes. So first off, I'd like to thank Eric Miss Servi. I was going to say it right from Onset Tetanus, although adding Anton and just clicking on the onset, that's <laughs> cheating. <laughs> you should return your championship right now. But Doesn't they, matter. You already, you already mailed them the trophies, Jeff. It's no, too I didn't. Late. Shh. Okay, <laughs> Anton runs one car. We run like nine. I know. Okay, <laughs> probably true. Yep. Well, and, and having driven with tetanus, it's always fun because oh, hey, this one blew up. We had you scheduled in it, but you're going to go on that one. Oh, but that one blew up, so we're going to put you in the Porsche now. So yes, I, I. Oh, now the Porsche <laughs> crapped out a rear end. How, what do you think about driving a neon? That's <laughs> The neon's probably faster, right? I was uh, scheduled for the neon. The neon blew up. I ended up in the 944. <laughs> there you go. So we, we have to have tetanus back for just racing talk. Talk yeah. about cars. So, yeah, and we're going to have Anton on sooner or later to talk about the art of the IOE. We haven't asked him yet, oh, but yes. I know he's going to come on. So thank you for downloading us. Make sure you continue to download us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Race- Racers. We hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. I'm so excited. I forgot to play the music. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Unlike the racing and all of the computer and radio <laughs> and GoPros you're about to buy on YouTube. It's totally free. Go to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Even if you hate us, give us five stars and tell us why. If you have any questions or show ideas, drop a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or email us at everyoneracers at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram or Twitter at Everyone Racers. Thanks again, and until next week, keep the shiny side up unless we're all going to see on the camera what you did when you kept <laughs> the other way around. And look, I got the music up. Music.